I think you're here to find out. Is the ocean better than the Tesla? Is the ocean a better deal than the Tesla? Is the ocean cooler than the Tesla? Yes, yes, the ocean is cooler than the Tesla. Is the ocean the best choice for me and my family? And you might be wondering which one I would buy if I were you. And you also want to know how the ocean compares to the Lyric and the VinFast and the Ionic 5 and the EV6 and the ID4. I'm just kidding about the ID4. No one's asked me about the ID4. All those vehicles get an honorable mention in this video. And it's all objective, and I'll tell you how. Stick around to the end. We'll talk old, new, right now benchmarks and more. And all of this stuff. No time to waste, right? to it. Instead of thinking of a benchmark in each category, we're just going to point to what a gas model version of that vehicle would be in each category if it existed. You'll catch on. It's time to put my current car up against my future car. Does that mean I'll be biased? Let's find out. I've also come up with an objective way for comparing modern EVs to each other. What's in that score is another video. You can watch it here once it's done. We've got things to talk about. Trunk size, range, power, tax credit, sustainability, nice. zero to 60 times. But before we talk about anything at all, we have to try to compare apples to apples. That's the whole issue when it comes to comparing vehicles. Since I've got an existing vehicle, let's spec out an ocean that looks and costs the same as my existing vehicle. Then we can do apples to apples. My Model Y is a long range with 20 inch wheels. It has autopilot, all the safety features and all the technology features, but it doesn't have full self driving. It does have all wheel drive. It does not have a tow package. It does have heated seats. It does not have a rotating screen, but the screen is already in landscape. So the streaming services are going to be optimized all the time, but connecting them costs $10 a month. And here it is, and we've got a hold up right here. We need to make some changes because, well, circumstances over at Tesla have changed. Now there's a $7,500 credit and 10,000 miles of free supercharging included with every Tesla Y or 3. Let's go ahead and add that enhanced autopilot, bringing our total to $66,490. Let's make that Fisker Ocean happen. Trim, you gotta go ultra, color, already got the right color. Wheels, 20 inch wheels, that's what's on the Model Y. Interior, we're gonna go with the base interior because I've got a black interior, this has a black interior. Packages, intelligent pilot, that's going to get us the integrated drive assist, the ultimate package, that'll get us the premium connectivity, web browser, valet mode, memory features, and rain sensing wipers that the Model Y has, the performance package, we'll go ahead and add that, that way our 0 to 60 time is as advertised, and the winner package, which gives us the preconditioning heated steering wheel and heated seats that the Model Y has. We don't need any of the accessories. So there it is, 64989 If the Model Y long range with 20 inch wheels is an apple, this is the Fisker Ocean of the same apple. Now we can compare features. First we'll compare what comes with the Ultra and then we'll compare what we've added with the packages. Both batteries are NMC, Fisker claims 350 miles, Tesla is 318 EPA which is 280 and 254 respectively at the daily charge limit of 80%. Both vehicles are dual motor with regen braking. Tesla has the NAX connector in the US. The Ocean is the CCS1 in the US. The Model Y does not have any of these power bank features, but these drive features, including a heat pump, are standard on the Y. European charge cables also included on the Y based on my research. Final caveat, the Model Y doesn't have a rear disconnect from what I can find. The Model Y has standard and chill mode. It does not have special drive modes. It does have vehicle hold control, tilt and telescopic wheel, but it does not come with 20 inch wheels. The standard wheels are 19 inch, and the 20 inch wheels are an option on the long range model with the performance model coming with standard 21 inch offset wheels. Standard tires are Continental Pro Contact RX on the 19 inch, Goodyear Eagle F1s on the 20 inch and Pirelli Summer or Michelin PS4s on the 21 inch wheels. I have a whole video dedicated to this batch of features. Check it out in the top right corner or in the description. Automatic emergency braking is included on the Y. So is blind spot monitoring if you count the on-screen live traffic visualizations. Lane keep assist is standard on the Y. So is emergency lane departure avoidance and traffic sign and light recognition as well as intelligent speed assist. 
Tesla uses steering wheel input to enforce driver attention. Our comparative priced Model Y does have auto park included with enhanced autopilot. Auto high beam is included on the Model Y, but the Model Y doesn't have door opening incident warning. It does have frontal collision warning and obstacle aware acceleration, but side collision warning is not specifically included. Finally, no rear view monitor on the Model Y. The Model Y roof is glass, but it does not open. California mode is not included. The lift gate is power, but the rear window does not roll down. Same with the rear quarter windows. Rear indicators are a standard mount, not a high mount. Front logo is static, not lighted. Headlights are LED, but they do not adjust automatically. All the other lights on the Model Y are LED as well. No rear fog light on the Model Y. The stop lamp is mounted high in the center, but the Model Y does not have splash lights. Acoustic glass is included on the Model Y and double layered on the front doors. The Model Y also has a rear glass defogger, heated outside rear view mirrors, and auto dim and power fold mirrors. A lot of these are common sense, let's just label those. The Model Y has a white interior option. The seats are not leather and not made from recycled materials based on my research. The Model Y does not come with taco trays. The rear view mirror is not digital. Seat split is 60-40 and there's no ambient lighting standard. This section here depends on the market. All of these features are included on the Model Y. With the exception of emergency car entry, the Tesla has emergency car exit, no tire repair kit, and no AC power outlet. The Model Y has something similar to all these. This is a light show or an external speaker conversation, or maybe you want to play your music through the external speaker or some emissions testing, or maybe check out a live camera feed. Tesla does service and roadside assistance from the app, so these aren't available on the central touchscreen. And that does it for standard features. Now it's time to talk about the packages we added. First up is the Intelligent Pilot Package. The Model Y does not come with a 360 degree view, but it comes standard with evasive steering assist. Our Model Y that we spec'd does have auto park. And Integrated Drive Assist is just autopilot. Lane Change Assist is another feature on Enhanced Autopilot, so is also included with our Model Y. Rear Cross Traffic Collision Mitigation is not available on the Model Y. On to the Ultimate Package. The screen in the Tesla is two inches smaller than the screen in the Fisker Ocean and it does not rotate. Premium connectivity is $10 a month in the Tesla and it includes access to all the streaming services. Also included with every Tesla is a web browser and valet mode. The memory features are part of each Tesla user's personal profile and the rain sensing wipers are paramount to autopilot functionality. For the performance package, once again, Tesla doesn't have specific drive modes, but full acceleration is available at any given time in the Model Y. And all of the Tesla traction features are standard on every model. With the winter package, front and rear heated seats are standard on the Model Y, so is a heated steering wheel. Heated washer nozzles are not available on the Model Y, but preconditioning is standard on every Tesla. Remote climate control is standard as part of the Tesla app, and as of April 2022, there is wiper defrost on the Model Y. The Model Y has a bigger boot and a bigger fruit. That's trunk and frunk for those of us in the U.S. Jokes aside, the Ocean has no frunk at all and several folks are not happy about it. The Model Y's range numbers are official EPA. The Fisker Ocean's range numbers are estimated. The only place it's mentioned on fueleconomy.gov is here as pre-production. There's no U.S. tax credit for the Ocean. There will most likely be a $7,500 credit for the Model Y. Some of us in the U.S. may get a $7,500 tax credit because we converted our $250 reservations to a $250 deposit during that sliver of a window in August during the transition of the law change. There's also a group of people that are certain those of us who converted our deposits will not be eligible because $250 is not 5% of the cost of the car. Here is the language those folks are referring to. And since we're talking legalese, let's look at the word can. This isn't a binding type of word. It is not must or certainly. In conclusion, will this sliver of early ocean sport, ultra, and extreme owners that converted their reservations to deposits get the tax credit? We don't know. I'd love to hear your thoughts about it in the comments below. On to design. This is a 1991 Camaro versus a 1991 300ZX. Both were designed with purpose. Both designs nailed it. One design is a snapshot of 1990s American muscle and is in many ways the inspiration for the modern Camaro. 
the other is timeless and is in many ways the inspiration for the modern Z. The Model 3 and the Model Y share about 75% of each other's parts, so it's probably safe to say that the design for the Model 3 and the Model Y have a similar source. That said, here's what the Model 3 designer was going for. No history, no legacy. So what was the actual design goal? Efficiency. Here's the fueleconomy.gov EV ratings sorted by best fuel economy. The Lucid Air has the highest rating, but if you scroll for a minute, you'll notice the Model 3 and Y are next. Why does the front of the Model Y slightly resemble a duck bill? Efficiency. Why does the rest of the Model Y resemble an egg? Efficiency. At 4,500 pounds, 1,000 pounds more than the Kona EV and the Bolt, the Model Y still edges out higher efficiency. The Model Y is a snapshot of American efficiency and was designed to be the best-selling car on Earth that was capable of carrying seven humans. The Ocean was Henrik Fisker's idea of the most exciting, desirable electric SUV. And it's timeless. Both nailed it. Which design is better? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. For sustainability, both of these vehicles are excellent examples of what sustainability looks like in 2023. The batteries can be recycled. Some of the components are made from recycled materials. The vehicles are produced in modern, state-of-the-art facilities that maximize energy efficiency using as much clean energy as possible to cut costs and future-proof their facilities. It's the 2000 Honda Insight versus the 2000 Toyota Prius. Because in 2000, that was the best you could get. I will also concede that the GM EV1 was probably more efficient, but we know what happened to those. For audience, it's 1997. You just bought a Honda Accord. The Toyota Camry is the best-selling car that year, but that's because it got a redesign for the 97 model year. However, you got the Special Edition Accord, which was a model Honda liked to release in the final year for each generation Accord. You paid $20,000. Your neighbor just bought a Saab 900. He went with the five-door SE Turbo Manual. He paid $31,000. And he got a lot more attention for the extra 11 k the Model Y is the Accord guy, and I'm not making this up. One of the most common Tesla trade-ins the last time they released the data was, you guessed it, Honda Accord. If you're the Saab guy, you might gamble on a lower volume brand and be willing to pay a little extra. The 1997 Saab was a very reliable vehicle, however, if you had an early 2000s 9.3, they were not as rock solid, with coolant leaks, electrical issues, and warning lights that were constantly popping on. For practicality, in this category, it's a Chevy Traverse versus a Range Rover Evoque. And we use the Range Rover Evoque because, well... The Fisker has copied my 2016 Evoque. It's so obvious. And the Chevy Traverse is an answer you'd give in the final round of Family Feud. Name the cheapest vehicle that seats eight. Name an animal with three letters in its name. Frog. If you're choosing the Ocean over the Model Y, you're not doing it for practicality. We don't have all the numbers, but we do know based on real-world observation that the Model Y is significantly bigger than the Fisker Ocean inside. And let's not forget all of these that the Ocean won't have access to. Power. For this one, you're looking at the Dodge Durango SRT Hellcat with a 0 to 60 at 3.5 and the Aston Martin DBX with a 0 to 60 at 3.9. One looks more plain than the other, but it's faster. Conversely, it doesn't matter which is faster when you're arguing 0 to 60 times under 4 seconds. For sport, people want stuff. Don't believe me? Ask a 304 Jeepers member. This is a Land Rover Defender 90 V8 two-door versus a Bronco two-door Black Diamond 7-speed manual hardtop. Say that three times fast. The Bronco has painted steel wheels with general grabbers, steel bumpers, the top comes off, the doors come off, 7-speed manual with crawler gear, water-resistant interior with rubberized floor and drain plugs, pre-installed custom switches, goes over any terrain or goat modes. Sounds Sporty, right? So how could the Defender 90 even pretend to be this sporty? 520 horsepower V8? Sure. Quad exhaust? Okay. Two doors? Cool. An AC outlet? A 12-inch screen? Cool taillights? Okay. But where's the real sport? How about recovery hooks in the back? Can't get one in the front, but they do offer a winch. How about a Wade sensing system? That's pretty legit. Slope assist, low traction launch, tailgate mounted full-size spare. Now we're talking. And finally, an armrest fridge. Both of these vehicles at the end of the day are sporty in their own right. So are the Fisker Ocean and the Tesla Model Y. The Ocean is sportier because it's smaller. It's sportier because its features are sport oriented, like the rear window going down, California mode, off-road mode, and bigger wheel options. 
But the Y is sporty too, with camp mode, more interior space, boombox, one of the most diverse aftermarkets of any manufacturer, and much more. So, are people going to look at you weird when you show up to an off-road rock crawl meetup in a Defender 90? If they do, it's probably because they're jealous more than anything else. And you could always offer them a cold beverage to break the ice. For utility, this is a Kia Sorento versus a Nissan Pathfinder. The Sorento tows about what you expect, just like the Model Y, 3,500 pounds. The Nissan Pathfinder performs better, just like the Ocean, unless you get the base trim, just like the Ocean. We aren't going to find two cars to compare for the interior. This is an iPhone 8 versus a Samsung Galaxy S9. Yes, I went there. They both came out around the same time. If you have one of either of these phones, both probably still work, but one is still supported. The S9 is done being updated, but as of the making of this video, the iPhone 8 is still supported by Apple and can run Apple's brand new iOS 16. Do updates make a difference? Ask Disney Plus. I don't even have a mom. Neither do we. If you can't run iOS 15, you can't run Disney Plus. So, is the iPhone 8 better than the Galaxy S9? Depends on who you ask. Is the Ocean software going to be better than the Tesla? It depends on how long they support it and how often they update it. But I thought we were talking about interior. That's the thing. The whole Tesla is software, all on one screen. If you like buttons, it's not for you. If you like Android, that's literally what the Ocean is running. So is comparing phones relevant to comparing these cars? I think it's the best way to do it. For service, Tesla service centers are packed. They have more appointments than they do capacity sometimes, but they do exist. Mine is 90 miles away. I have two Teslas and we have done one service appointment total in two total years of operation. And they gave us a loaner car. This is like Walmart versus Amazon when you need to find something right away and have no spare time. You can just run to the store and get it, but then you're canceling plans. You can order it online with just a few clicks, but you won't have it for a couple days. Now let's say you bought the wrong thing. That's where service comes in. The return process for Amazon can be hard or easy. It can be free or the cost of what you bought, depending on what seller you bought it from and how much it costs or weighs. With Walmart, just shove it back in the box and take it to the store. You'll get your money back or the correct item the same day. The service desk is always a bit sketchy, but they make it right, and at least you've got a person to talk to. This is a solid comparison for what you'll end up with. Tesla is Walmart, Fisker is Amazon. Depending on your location, you may get extremely knowledgeable trained service people for your ocean, but if you live where I do, you may end up at a service center that's never seen an ocean before. There's a Tesla service center everywhere that you can buy one, or at least close, and you'll get the service done with a pretty good idea of how it's going to be done and how long it will take. With Fisker, if you've got an unknown problem, you may be the first person ever to have it. With regard to battery, the Ocean is Alfa Romeo and the Model Y is Stellantis. Tesla buys batteries from every company, literally every company. They are the leaders in volume, energy density, form factor innovation, structural integration, and vertical integration. Most likely, the Y has Panasonic batteries that are made in the US. One of the big companies that Tesla buys batteries from is CATL, which is where Fisker will get the packs for the Ocean. CATL is the big biggest battery manufacturer on earth and has a better reputation than let's say LG Energy. Both vehicles will feature an NMC chemistry that will require 80% or lower daily charge. The Ocean Sport is the exception here. It has a lithium iron phosphate chemistry, which does have fewer miles of range overall, but can be charged to 100% daily. In conclusion, Tesla is Stellantis, the entire breadth of battery brands across the planet. Alfa Romeo is just a brand inside of a brand. That's how the Fisker's battery situation is set up. Let's talk about fun. This is a 2009 Saturn Sky Redline versus a 2009 Honda S2000 in 2022. I stand by the Fisker is more fun argument that I've made in previous videos for the driver. But what about the kids? The Model Y is plenty of fun. You can stream and play games at every price point and practice emissions, even with the app, and talk through the external speaker and take Rainbow Road and do a light show. So kids are going to have more fun in the Tesla. But others will assume you're having more fun in the ocean because they don't know what the heck it is. This is the same story with the Saturn and the S2000. People know what an S2000 is. They know it's fun, but did they know the Saturn has more horsepower and a faster 0-60 to 60 time? Probably not. For quality, initial quality doesn't tell the whole story. In 2004, J.D. Power picked the Chrysler Concorde for midsize car initial quality winner. Better than Accord and Camry? Not sure I could explain how they got this result, 
but I'm sure they had a reason. Let's talk about panel gaps. My Model Y has a panel gap or two that aren't NASA grade, but I'm also the only one who cares about them. My dad bought a 22 CRV in October this year, the last model year it ran. It was the last 22 that wasn't spoken for at my hometown dealership. So you could assume this was kind of maximum quality control. They started making this vehicle in 2017. That means Honda has built this car for six model years, but it had gaps, scratches, and all kinds of small imperfections. I found them as I waxed and protected it after he brought it home from the dealership. None of this is noticeable at six feet. The panel gaps, the scratches. Fisker is going to build cars with imperfections too. Will it be seats, software, suspension, something else? We'll have to see. Quality is a Subaru Outback with 125,000 miles versus a Toyota RAV4 with 125,000 miles. Type in when do Toyota in Google and you get this. Type in when do Subaru into Google and you get this. Does this totally obvious and known fact about Subaru engines keep people from buying Subaru? Not in my neck of the woods. Seems like every third car is a Subaru here in the mountains. The Model Y is the Subaru, but instead of a head gasket, it's paint, or panel gaps, or even a faulty motor. But all these happen early in the vehicle's life, and the vehicles are under warranty. You can buy a Toyota with 125,000 miles, and it could be perfect, or any given thing could be wrong. The Toyota I bought had warped rotors and busted rear shocks. At the end of the day, both the Toyota and the Subaru are quality vehicles. What's your experience going to be like? You never know what you're going to get. For technology, the Fisker Ocean is going to come with some amazing technology, like digital radar, which Tesla is actually going to beat Fisker to market with, as they are about to add digital radar themselves, ADAS features, which Tesla also offers, a rotating screen for media, limo mode, or rear seat climate control, which admittedly is very nice. These are some of the tech standouts for the Ocean. For the Model Y, it's dog mode, century mode, car wash mode, screen clean mode, Joe mode, live video in the app, the app, automatic battery preconditioning prior to fast charging, plug and charge capability on the world's largest charging network, on-screen route planning with charging and waypoints. The Ocean may end up with almost all of these over time, but the Model Y has them now. Neither vehicle offers Android Auto or CarPlay. What's my conclusion? Tech's gonna be everything with these cars, and with either one, you may end up with a pineapple on the pizza type reaction. Thank goodness, or oh no, I don't think so. For value, I just looked up the value on my Model Y. It's the same. I can sell my car to another person for the exact same amount of money I paid for it, $57,000. Quick caveat here, this was mid-month December. Here's what it is today, the day the video comes out. I've also put 1,000 miles on the car. Is the ocean gonna hold its value? Initially, there's no question. And it's an EV, which is another thing it's got going for it. It's service and company longevity that will help determine the five-year value and beyond for the Fisker Ocean. For marketing, both companies have done a little non-traditional work when it comes to marketing. Tesla essentially doing none, and Fisker doing very little. They are not doing none. I've seen ads for the Ocean myself. Let me know in the comments if you have as well. It's the 2017 Chevy Bolt versus the 2017 Chevy Volt. Ad spending is very low on one, zero on the other. While researching for this video, I found a Fisker Ocean ad, in fact. On the same article that shows Tesla stock was following the macro trends until Elon bought Twitter and began to, well... For comfort, the Model Y rides a little rough on a bumpy road. It has a harsher feel than my wife's standard range Model 3, but I've never been more comfortable in seats over a long distance than I have in the Model Y. My dad had a 1985 Buick LeSabre Limited. It was so comfortable to ride in. He also, at one point, had a 1978 Datsun F10. Bad roads in the Model Y feel like you're in a Datsun F10, but the seats are like the LeSabre. I have only sat in the Ocean pre-production prototype. Based on that, I think the seats will be slightly less comfortable than the Model Y, but sufficiently supportive. I'm guessing the ride quality on rougher roads will be better in the Ocean, as it's likely the Ocean will have a little more ground clearance and a Magna-designed suspension. With regards to exclusivity, if you tell a car person you've got an Impala SS with no context, they'll probably say, sweet, or those are cool, my buddy used to have one or something like that, because they are sweet. The Impala SS is one of the coolest things to come from 1990s GM. But what if your Impala SS isn't from 1996? 
It's from 2006. This is a completely different experience. The Ocean is the 1996, rare and cool in today's market. The Tesla is a 2006. Most people are not going to pay it much attention until you tell them what it is. It's definitely exclusive and rare in the grand scheme of things, but it blends in 90% of the time. For luxury, the Model Y is technically a luxury vehicle, but it'd be hard to tell unless you took an extended trip in the aforementioned comfort of the seats. Sure, it has technological luxuries, but so does a Honda Civic. The Fisker Ocean feels this way too. It's luxury, certainly, but that's not why it got an invitation to the party. These two EVs are the Mercedes A-Class. They're BMW 318s, Audi Q3s. They are everyman luxury. They are not Q8s. They are not X7s. They're not Aston Martin Signets either. They belong in the luxury segment, but that's not saying as much as it used to, as the Model Y is only $20,000 more than a loaded CRV and only $20,000 less than a GLE 53 AMG. And in today's market, $20,000 doesn't get you a new SUV. So the days of, I could get two CRVs for the price of that are gone with the chip shortage. Unless you're taking your entire family on a track day or trying to get a ticket, both of these SUVs will handle way better than you'll ever need them to. It's a GTI versus a WRX a Mustang versus a Camaro, a Focus RS versus a Civic Type R. You can argue all day about which has the edge, but they're both great at what they do. For charging, let's just drop some names. Wayne Gretzky, Tiger Woods, Michael Jordan, Michael Phelps, Serena Williams, Usain Bolt, Tom Brady. You're not going to beat Tesla at its own game. Nobody else wants to get into charging. Ford doesn't have a network. GM doesn't have a network. Hyundai, Kia, Nissan. Nope. Oh, and forcing your dealership owners to build chargers at the dealership or forfeit allocations to EVs is not a network. It's indentured servitude. Volkswagen owns a company they were forced to start that runs a network because they cheated and got caught. That's not a profit model, that's detention. So, if charging is a thing for you, and if you travel, it is, there's one clear winner followed not so closely by everybody else. You can view the chargers, you can view the charging speeds, you can view how many people are at the chargers from the main screen, the car will divert you away from busy chargers, you can make an argument for Kobe, LeBron, Ovechkin, Drew Brees, Peyton Manning, Will Chamberlain had a 100-point game. Jordan didn't do that, and they're all good arguments, but they won't get you as many points in fast money. Then we wanted something found in a refrigerator. You said ice. That's the place to find it. Our survey said 17. For community, the Tesla community is huge, and there's good and bad that come with that. There's a lot of noise, but there's also a lot of help. I do feel the Fisker community will be helpful, and there will be lots of information, because the Fisker community formed before the vehicles even got released. And that's on Fisker for not including enough information. How big is the Tesla community? That's not single year sales, that's total ever. That's how big the Tesla community is. For price, the Tesla Model Y is a Range Rover. Not a Range Rover Sport, not a Range Rover Velar, the original. You know what you're getting, and you know why it costs what it costs. The Range Rover price starts at hard to explain and goes up to, if you have to ask, you can't afford it. The Fisker Ocean is Land Rover the brand. It offers affordable models, something you can get, not just something you can dream of. But if you want the cool options, you've got to come with the money. And if you want the real thing, you've got to come with the money. The Fisker Ocean starts at $37,499 U.S., which is an affordable car in today's market. But $70,000 for an Extreme, an Ocean One, or a highly specced Ultra prices out a lot of people who signed up wanting the $37,000 model in 2021, thinking they would also be guaranteed a $7,500 tax credit off the top. So, with the Fisker, you get that Range Rover exclusivity for under 40 k But if you wanted to have all the exclusive stuff a vehicle like it is supposed to come with, you've got to pay Model Y money. We talked about the bait-and-switch Fisker may or may not have pulled in my previous video, watch it here, but I think the Inflation Reduction Act is the real bait and switch. For those of you who held off buying your Model Y until January, bad news, there is no tax credit, at least until March. The Model Y costs more than the $55,000 cap it was assigned. Only way to beat this? Get a seven-seater. And now for the rating. Out of 50, the Fisker Ocean is... And the Model Y is... Want to know how I got there? That video will be linked at the end of this one, and I'll break down all the categories and tough decisions I made.
Also, here's a ranked list of all the vehicles I mentioned at the beginning of the video in order. Want to see how I got their score? Ring the bell. Those videos are coming. And finally, the top five reasons to buy each of these vehicles. Reason one, the Model Y is the best selling electric vehicle. Tesla has three gigantic factories and a few others. Two of those are dedicated to just making this vehicle right now. It's not going to change anytime soon. In my opinion, design is the reason to get a Fisker Ocean. It's the whole point. The number two reason to buy the Model Y is value. You get what you pay for, and those dollars won't disappear as quickly as you're used to. The number two reason to buy the Fisker Ocean is exclusivity. If you want to be bleeding edge, the Fisker Ocean is an obvious choice when it comes to exclusive electric vehicles. The number three reason to buy the Model Y is the aftermarket. There are so many upgrades, changes, products, and support systems already in place for the Model Y. And as an owner, I can honestly say I enjoy that. The number three reason to buy the Fisker Ocean is affordability. You can get in at $37,499. Will it be 2024? Yes, probably. But they will sell you a beautiful electric SUV for under $40,000. That makes it worth buying for a lot of people. The number four reason to buy the Model Y is software. They can copycat. They can cherry pick. But they're all following Tesla. It might be hard to admit, but it's true. The number four reason to buy the Fisker Ocean is fun. This vehicle is designed to go out and have fun. Have fun by yourself. Have fun with a friend. Brag about the solar roof. Introduce people to an SUV that doesn't have one of those same badges on it. Nothing about this thing is the same, and that makes it fun. Number five reason to buy the Model Y is charging, period. Enough said. And the number five reason to buy the Fisker Ocean is it's not a Model Y. That might not be a big deal now, unless you live in California. The Camry used to be a staple of an American neighborhood, and then the SUVs took over, and Tesla is next in line for the throne. Don't want to be part of that? Get an Ocean. There you have it. The Ocean versus the Model Y. And in case you're wondering, reasonable me would buy the Model Y, impulse me, definitely getting an Ocean. What did I miss? Where can I improve? Did you learn anything? Which one are you getting? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Make sure you check out my video on how to compare EVs head to head. If that video is done, it's right here. Subscribe for more. We'll see you on the next one. Hey, smash the like button. Thank you.